I remember the day like it was yesterday, September 12th, 2010, the day I moved into my eighth placement. Scared, knowing that I was gonna be the new girl all over again. I hated being the new girl, especially to a group of females who saw me as dog meat. The only thing I can think of was who I was gonna room with. I prayed to God whoever she was, was nice and full of excitement so I can feel welcomed. I remember grabbing one of my trash bags out of my social worker's car, heading to go sign in at the front desk. She rushed out the car, didn't even think to help me. Seemed like she was more excited than I was, but this was nothing new to me, nor was I excited. The anxiety I felt, crunchy stomach, sweaty hands, from holding my two trash bags full of clothes that I can barely fit, and old books that I had never turned to the library, and my journal that always kept me safe for some reason. Once we got to the front desk, I was introduced to some of the staff, Maria, Mike, and Tony. They told me I had to leave my bags in the office. They had to make sure there was no sharp objects or anything out of the ordinary. I was so thirsty from all this introducing myself process but I wanted to hold my cool. But as my social worker begins to leave, the staff was leading me to my room. I looked at her while I'm walking up the stairs, wishing that was me going home to a family. Must be nice. Once staff brought my bags back up, they told me the girl should be on the way back from school. You can go down to the dining room whenever you like. I went downstairs in the kitchen and waited. As I waited in the dining room for all 24 girls to get out of school and come have snack, five minutes later I heard loud noises, laughs, irritation, like somebody was having a bad day. I'm sitting there pretending, looking out the window like I didn't know there was a loud noise coming towards my way. Nobody paid attention to me until everybody sat down. And that's when a couple of girls came my way asking me all type of questions like, you new? Are you nice? Not everybody speaks at once, I said to myself. Finally, the staff split us up into groups to do different activities. I knew somebody was going to make me introduce myself. And although I've been there for only a couple of hours, I knew the rundown, or in other words, I knew how and when things go down. Surprisingly, the girl I was going to be rooming with was in one of my activities group I was placed in. You can tell in her eyes she missed her roommate whose butt I was taking, or that was just how she was. She just seemed so angry. I thought I was gonna get lucky with someone who's nice or maybe even a nerd that wouldn't make fun of you because you snore. Yeah, I was a big chunky thing back then. I wouldn't go to sleep until the other person in the room went, on, went to sleep first. All I could think about was how I was gonna sleep because she just seemed so agitated and I did not want my snoring to be another reason to bother her. I introduced myself to the people in my group in my sweetest little voice. I'm Ashira, my favorite color is red, and um, that's it. I hurried and sat down because I knew somebody's eyes were checking out my style and I wasn't the best stylist. Plus, my little chunky belly wasn't making it no better. I've been wearing the same shirt for two days. My shirt was a size medium and I was a size 2X. In silence, one of the staff asked if anybody had any other questions to ask me. A girl named Selena asked, why are you here? I didn't know that this activities group was gonna get so personal, but I told her my social worker couldn't find me a foster home, so it really wasn't up to me to be here or not. She asked another question, why you look so tired like you've been fighting all your life? Everybody laughed and I even smirked like it was funny, but it really wasn't. I was so sensitive, but I couldn't show it. Once everybody got done laughing, I heard and replied, I've been on the streets for the past three weeks with my sister after we got kicked out of our foster home. Why y'all get kicked out? Your social worker didn't know or even care to come get y'all? Selena asked. We tried breaking the chain on the refrigerator door. We were hungry and my social worker, she wasn't much of a social worker. She called instead of visiting us once a month and our foster mom always told her we were in the backyard playing. But in reality, we were forced to go to sleep at five, so we were always in our rooms. We couldn't call anybody, speak to anybody, nor be kids. At this point, I was done talking. I hope Selena was done with all these questions she had. I started thinking about my sister, and where could she be? I was saddened. They split us up once again. We finished our activity group session, and at that time, it was time to go up and shower and get ready to go into our rooms. I walked over to the bathroom to see what I was working with and I noticed it was only one shower and three bathroom stalls. Mind you, the shower was kind of see-through and me being insecure by myself didn't make it any better. I was looking around so I could know my way around things so 
I would have to ask anybody for help. After everybody was done taking their shower, I hurried and jumped right on in. It was a long day and I was ready for it to be over with. My roommate startled me when I came into the room, asking me, how do you pronounce your name? And what um, placement you came from? I was so nervous, I even said my name wrong. Um, my name is Ashraya, uh, my name is Ashira, my bad, it's Ashira. <laughs> um, and my last placement I was in was in Pasadena. In my head, I'm hoping I'm not talking too much. She went on and said, oh, okay, all right. Well, that was the start, I said to myself. By the time it was time to go to sleep, I laid down in my cot. Felt like I was in prison because the bus stop, the bus stop bench feels way better than this. I'm looking around the room. I turn to my side against the wall thinking I'm not going to make it here. Nobody likes me and to top things off, my roommate asks the staff if she can sleep in a different room. Did I scare her off already? I only said a couple of words to her. I didn't even snore yet. <laughs> I put my face in between my pillow and cried. I started to think about my parents. Why couldn't they just be normal parents? Why couldn't I just have a normal life? Why did I have, what did I have to pay for their mistakes? My tears began to soak my pillow. I just didn't understand. Like, was it me? I never asked for much, but I just never understood why I was going through all this hell. All I ever wanted was a real mom and a real dad. I never, I never cared for having a dad because my only father, who broke my heart before any man ever could. But this was my life. This is just something I had to deal with. Staff woke us up around seven in the morning. I was cold, drew all on the side of my mouth, dried up tears on my face. I had to use the restroom so bad where I didn't want to make eye contact with anyone. I heard people arguing in the restroom, so I went in despite me being scared. I just wanted to be nosy. A couple of girls stared me down and came to me, grabbing me by my shoulders and taking me into their room. I'm like, what is going on here? But it was a friendly grab. It wasn't forceful or anything. Maybe it was like a welcome thing that they do, I thought to myself. I really didn't care. I figured they liked me so far. But something was fishy, and I felt it. So the girls went on and told me I had to fight a girl named Brittany. I said, what for? They replied, you have to, for us. If I did, I could hang out with them and do things with them. I was at a time in my life where I was trying to go back home to my aunts for good, at least. I knew that if I did what I was told, I knew there wasn't no chance of me going back home. I knew it was up to me to decide if I wanted to take that chance. I wanted to be liked, known, noticed, and understood at the most. Although things weren't looking good for me at that time, I knew I had to stay true to myself. I knew that bullying was wrong. I knew how it felt to be pushed around and be bullied. I also knew that me trying to be liked was not very important. Although every person that came into my life has done me wrong or hurt me in some type of way, you would think I would do wrong back. But I was tired. I was tired of fighting, not physically, but mentally. I knew it was time for me to take my own seat at the table. One of our staff came into our room and asked, what's the fuss all about? Deep down, I wanted her to see the look on my face and pull me away and ask what's wrong, but she didn't. She left. The girls were talking about something else, and I thought to myself, hopefully they would just let it go or they'll forget about it. But once they saw the staff leave downstairs, they called my name, hey, Sharika and came hurling up to me, one girl wrapping her arms around my shoulder and smiling. My roommate came in and I'm thinking maybe she's gonna help me out since we said a few words to each other in the room. Plus I'm the new girl, but to find out she was top dog. All of a sudden she smiled and say, it's okay girl, just do it. Ain't nothing gonna happen to you. I'm like, oh, so you know, she's talking now, you know? But they kept annoying me, asking me, am I gonna punk out? I'm like, I never even asked for all this. All their dirty work and they want me to do all this? But that was it. After all I've been through, I'm not a punk. I'm a survivor. And I was not gonna let anybody take that away from me. I walked out the room and right before I left, right before I left the door, I turned around and told them, you know, my heart was beating so fast, but I, but I stood up, I put my head down a little bit because I, I, I wasn't that bold and, and said, I, I'm not doing anything but, but taking my butt in the restroom and using the toilet. I tried to say it in a low tone, but maybe add a little humor to it, but I just kept on because I knew I was embarrassing myself and do what I need to do to get out of this place. 
How can you guys be so heartless to somebody that hasn't done anything to you guys? Well, I, I didn't say that part because you know, I didn't prepare myself for it. But <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just not that type of person and walked away. You did that, Ashira, I said to myself, walking away with pride and dignity. Thank you. <laughs>